life on your own to a family of your own. From walking her to school to walking her down the aisle. From the saddest ending to happier beginnings. Avita. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Are we here? Yes, uh, welcome to our um, webinar on the golden age of infrastructure. It's a really interesting topic, especially now. Um, this is uh, organized by Philippine Stars Property Report and Avida, the recognized leader and preferred provider of integrated master plan and sustainable communities for middle-income Filipino families. Of course, we all know Avidis by the Ayala Group. No? So we have with us today an interesting panel of um, speakers. Um, uh, let me introduce to you Miss um, Anna May uh, Lamentillo. She's the chairperson of the Build, Build, Build program of the Department Department of Public Works and Highways. Good afternoon, Miss Anna. Hi. Good afternoon, Miss Iris. Thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure. Yes, Miss Anna. Yeah. Hi, Miss Anna. We're happy to have you here. Miss Anna is my fellow Iska. Uh, she's from UP also, and she's a uh, cum laude. Yeah. Um, we also have with us architect Felino A. Palafox Jr. Of course, who doesn't know architect June? Um, we were together in Russia before for the Hi. visit of President Duterte. Good afternoon, architect. Good afternoon. Thanks for inviting me here. Yes, thank you for joining us. We also have architect Salvador Tan. Um, he's the architect and urban planner and assistant vice president of Ayala Land Inc. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, afternoon architect. Uh, Yes, thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so it's an interesting discussion. We hope you'll enjoy. Um, it's also very timely because, you know, we all know that in terms of infrastru infrastructure, we've um, lagged behind um, in other countries uh, as well as some of our peers in the region. No? but. Miss Anna will tell us why um, it's not it's not necessarily the case now. We're trying to catch catch up with it. Um, so we'll we'll have an interesting discussion. We'll also we have an architect. We have two architects, of course, and um, architect Junaman will talk about. Um, will share with us his thoughts on urban planning, and of course, um, from the property developer's point of view. We'll also have, we'll hear from Architect Tan on how Ayala is able to participate in the government's Build, Build, Build program, as well as, as a developer, how it is able to integrate its projects, given um, each administration's plan. Because, you know, for one, Avida is already 30, year old, 30 years old, so how, do, how does it play? Do you consider every administration's BBB program and... Um, your project, so things like that. We'll have a really interesting discussion now. Um, build, build, build affects all of us, no? You know, mobility, traffic, we're all, sometimes we're all late for work because of the traffic. Um, sometimes we just want to move to a place where, you know, um, the transportation is easier and there's less traffic. But um, to start off this webinar, we want to hear from Miss Anna. Um, Shemper, we're all excited. Where are we now in the golden age of infrastructure? No, it's very interesting. I remember in 2016, I was really excited to hear that it's one of the government's priority. No, and um, while COVID, because of COVID, I haven't seen a lot now. Um, I would love to hear uh, an update from architect, uh, from Miss Anna, sorry, on where are we now in the in the government's build, build, build program. So take it away, Miss Anna. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, in this uh, forum. Uh, in the 
Ayala Land is one of our partners in the Build, Build, Build program. And uh, we're very happy that uh, there is a good mix of uh, public and private cooperation in the government's uh, infrastructure program. So um, I'm about to share my uh, presentation now. Um, is it there already? Yes, that's perfect. Um, the Build, Build, Build program is in every region in the country. It's um, it's in all 18 regions. It's the uh, boldest, uh, most ambitious infrastructure program in Philippine history. Since we started in uh, 2016, we have built 25,343 kilometers of roads, 5,271 bridges, 9,797 flood mitigation structures, 141,687 classrooms, 138 evacuation centers, 557 COVID-19 facilities. Um, as you can see, uh, this is the uh, number of jobs generated since 2016 because of Build, Build, Build. Uh, so in the past few years, we have generated 6.57 million jobs. Um, even during the pandemic, we were able to generate about uh, 1.5 million jobs um, that's uh, build, build, build related. Uh, Luzon Spine Expressway is one of the uh, most ambitious program uh, for Luzon. Uh, this plans to expand uh, the high standard highway expressway network from 385 kilometers to 1,040 kilometers. Um, when we're done with the master plan, we'd be able to reduce the travel time from La Union to Bicol from 16 hours to 8 hours and 15 minutes. We've seen uh, the drastic change uh, that uh, the master plan has already brought about uh, with the opening of Skyway Stage 3 um, and Lex uh, Harbor Link. Um, we've also, uh, we're also about to open the Central Luzon Link Expressway, uh, the phase two of the Plaridel Bypass, and uh, there will be more uh, opening uh, this year. Um, as you can see, we've already opened uh, the Tarlac uh, Pangasinan La Union Expressway, which is an 89.21 kilometer expressway spanning from Tarlac City to Rosario La Union. And now travel time between Tarlac City and Rosario La Union has been reduced from 3.5 hours to one hour. If you're going to Baguio City, it's only three hours uh, away. And if you're coming from Quezon City to La Union, it's only 3.5 hours away. Uh, we also have, we just came uh, from the Central Luzon Link Expressway yesterday with Secretary Villar. This is a 30-kilometer expressway from Tarlac City to Cabanatuan City in Nueva Ecija. So essentially, it connects uh, Nueva Ecija and Tarlac um, within a span of 20 minutes. So kung dati, aabutin po kayo ng 70 minutes to traverse uh, Tarlac and Nueva Ecija. With the completion of CELEX, uh, 20 minutes na lang po yan. The first phase will be opened by June of this year. We also have the NLEX Harbor Link Segment 10. This is part of the EDSA decongestion program also. This is the first truck-graded expressway. Uh, this not only solves uh, the problem on traffic congestion, uh, but this also solves yung, uh, yung uh, congestion natin with the truck ban, yung window hours natin. Because this alignment can be accessed 24-7 uh, by trucks. So this is a 5.58-kilometer expressway connecting MacArthur Highway and C3 Road. So kung yung travel time yung, uh, between Valenzuela and Caloocan, dati is uh, one hour, ngayon po uh, five minutes na lang po yan. We also have the NLEX Harbor Link uh, Radial Road 10 exit ramp, which is a 2.6-kilometer four-lane elevated uh, ramp, which extends the NLEX Harbor Link segment 10 to the Radial Road 10 alignment. So if dati po uh, abutin po kayo ng about uh, one hour or more to traverse Quezon City and Port Area, Manila, when you use the NLEX Harbor Link um, alignment, uh, 15 minutes na lang po yan. Uh, we are able to open, this was the first project that we were able to open during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, this was the first project that was completed in a construction bubble. 
So, uh, yun po yung ating changes na ginawa dito po sa ating uh, Build, Build, Build program. There were uh, new rules that was imposed during the onset of the pandemic. And uh, similar to the NBA bubble, lahat po ng construction workers natin are, um, are in a bubble para po tuloy-tuloy po yung ating construction for our BBB program and for it to be delivered on its original uh, schedule. Ang maganda po ngayon dito po sa ating master plan, ito pong ating NLEX Harbor Link R10 exit ramp, yung ating NLEX Harbor Link segment 10. This will be connected eventually to the Skyway Stage 3. Um, we're very uh, happy about this uh, kasi po ito pong Metro Manila Skyway, akala po ng mga tao ito na po yung final uh, opening. Hindi po, this is only a partial opening. In fact, we've only opened 10 out of the 29 ramps of Skyway Stage 3. At ang pinakamaganda po sa Skyway Stage 3, it will eventually be able to connect doon po sa ating NLEX Harbor Link segment, which will make uh, almost every city in Metro Manila uh, connected within a 20 to 30 minute time frame. Uh, kung ngayon po may direct access ka from Quezon City to Makati uh, to Muntinlupa, when we're done with the entire master plan, we're confident we'd be able to deliver everything by 2022. You'd be you'd have a direct access from Valenzuela, Malabon, Navotas to Makati without traversing EDSA. And so now, siguro kapag ka natapos po natin tong alternate route uh, to EDSA in C5, we'd be able to discuss um, a more long-term solution for EDSA and C5 rehabilitation because we all know how deteriorated the 90-year-old uh, road is. So, uh, yun po, uh, uh, I, I think most of us here would um, nadaanan na po nila yung Skyway at uh, malaki po talaga yung naging contributory uh, factor po nito. At uh, we're very happy that this is the first time that the expressways um, managed by different concessionaires will interconnect. Uh, ito po yung NLEX SLEX connector. This is an 8-kilometer expressway from C3 Road in Caloocan to PUP in Manila and will connect to the alignment of Skyway Stage 3. When this is complete, yung travel time po from SLEX to NLEX will be reduced from 2 hours to 20 minutes. Moreover, uh, magkakaroon din po tayo ng access ramps doon po sa may Espanya which we're confident that we'd be able to deliver uh, within the year. Uh, this is the Plaridel Bypass Road, which uh, will shorten the travel time from NLEX Balagtas to Maharlikahal Highway by about uh, 30 minutes. Ito po ay uh, with the Japanese government. Uh, the NAIA X uh, Phase 2 is also part of the EDSA decongestion program. Ang maganda po dito, it is connected po doon sa ating Skyway Stage 3, doon po sa Skyway Extension, pati na po doon sa NLEX SLEX connector. So we'll effectively have a loop within Metro Manila. Yung Cavite Laguna Expressway po natin, it's a 45.29 kilometer expressway connecting Cavite in Kawit Cavite and SLEX Mamplasan Interchange in uh, Binyan Laguna. So kung yung travel time po natin from Cavite at SLEX mag-reduce po yan from 1.5 hours to only 45 minutes. Uh, nabuksan na po natin yung Laguna segment natin. So kung pupunda po kayo ng Tagaytay, kaya po yan within a 45-minute time frame. Uh, nandito din po yung Southeast Metro Manila Expressway. This is a combination of elevated and at-grade expressway from uh, Skyway or FTI in Tagig City to Batasan Complex in uh, Quezon City. So yung travel time po natin from Bikutan to Batasan uh, will be reduced from 1 hour to 50 uh, minutes. And dyan din po yung BGC Ortigas Link Bridge. This is no longer the updated photo. Uh, magkadikit na po yung bridge. Uh, we're now done with the main bridge. Now we're doing the approaches already. And we're confident we'd be able to deliver uh, the first bridge under the Metro Manila Logistics Network uh, by this year. Um, ito po ay may pedestrian infrastructure po sa gilid. So the people can actually ride the bike uh, going from BGC to Ortigas. So kung dati po, inaabot kayo ng isang oras para po to traverse itong Tagig at saka po Pasig. Uh, when this project is completed within the year, 12 minutes na lang po yan. We also have the Estrella Pantaleon Bridge. Uh, we replaced uh, the old bridge and moved it to Pangasinan. And now the new bridge will be completed by this year. 
So yung Makati to Mandaluyong po will be connected within a 10 to 12 minute time frame. Ang Laguna Lake Highway po, uh, this, uh, ito po yung uh, same alignment ng C6 Expressway dito po siya dadaan. This is our first toll-free uh, expressway with uh, segregated bicycle lanes. Uh, disconnected yung Tai Tai Rizal po, papunta pong Bikutan. Kung dati po, inaabot ng one hour, ngayon 30 minutes na lang po. Uh, we also have the C5 uh, South Link Expressway. We've completed the first segment. This is the 7.7 kilometer six lane expressway, which starts from Radial Road 1 to SLEX or C5. So kung dati po, inaabot kayo ng 40 minutes to traverse it ngayon po, 10 minutes na lang po. Uh, we, we're also done with the Lawton Avenue, which is, this is the widening of the 3.3 kilometer uh, Fort Bonifacio Nichols Field Road. This is in preparation for more uh, infrastructure highway. Ito pong Mindanao Avenue extension. This is a 20-year-old project and we're confident we'd be able to deliver this project before the term of the president ends. This is a 3.2 kilometer four lane divided highway which will connect ito pong Valenzuela, North Caloocan, Quezon City, pati po NLEX. So kung dati po inaabot kayo ng 1 hour and 30 minutes, 20 minutes na lang po yan pag natapos po natin to. Um, uh, I don't think we have the time for all the projects, but uh, this is the biggest master plan I think that uh, this uh, government is undertaking. We are uh, simultaneously conducting the pre-feasibility study and the feasibility study of uh, the Mega Bridges project, which we hope will lay the foundation to eventually connect Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao via land travel. Um, ito po yung ating render design for the Pangil Bay Bridge. This is for the Bataan Cavite Interlink Road. And uh, I'm done po. Maraming salamat. Um, this update is really, really very important, no? Because um, we always, like, as a journalist, no? We, we, we're always waiting for updates because ang laki ng expectation, you know, saying this is a, uh, like a, a major program of the Duterte administration, no? And we all, we all wonder sometimes, where's the golden age? Where's the golden age? And your your presentation has clarified in great detail and in um, including the timetables, no? Uh, the status of these different projects. Um, sabi nga, there's a joke na, pwede na daw manligaw ang taga Luzon ang taga north to the south kasi connected na. So, may mga ganong tweets. And you mentioned the Skyway. Tinatimingan ko talaga from Buendia to Quezon City. Eight minutes talaga siya. So, it's really well appreciated by the public. No? Um, but, you know, these are all good and these are really very, um, it's something we should be proud of. No? And you also, as part of the administration, this is something you should be proud of as well. But we're compared to other countries like when we go to Malaysia, Singapore, um, they're all really developed. They have um, efficient roads and their traffic are you know less congested than ours. Where do you think the bottleneck comes? You know, parang why is it bakit tayo na, na delay ng ganito? Is there a lack of private? sector participation any thoughts on this uh i guess when you talk about uh philippine infrastructure spending for the past uh 50 years your average gdp spending natin is only about 2.4 percent uh on average uh the required mm. is about five percent uh kaya hindi na kami nagulat when we came into the picture hindi na kami nagulat na meron tayong uh, mataas na bottleneck and as far as infrastructure is concerned. I mean, we all live in Metro Manila. And we all know that EDSA has not been rehabilitated for so many years. It's a 90-year-old road. And the last time it was extended to Taft was during the 1970s. And it was not touched thereafter. Right. Um, it has already exceeded its original maximum capacity. So when we're trying to do the master plan for EDSA, we really looked at the numbers first. How many um, right. roads do we have to build to uh, decongest EDSA by at least 150,000 vehicles, which will, you know, 
mababalik niya yung original capacity of it of EDSA during the 1930s when it was uh, built. So uh, ganun po yung yung ginawa ni Secretary Villar. Um, he made sure that the mm -hmm. expressways were interconnected because uh, the public mm -hmm. has the most to gain when they don't have to yes. uh, go down the expressway and then go up again just because this is managed by different concessionaires. So we're, we're thankful for all the concessionaires who agreed uh, for the first time to interconnect. And uh, I think the Filipino public now will realize will how benefit. much uh, effect and benefit it will have because for the first time, SLEX and NLEX will be interconnected. And I think uh, sobrang laki po nung, uh, potential. Right, right. Thank you for that um, update. No, so spending school lang, GDP spending ang isa sa malaking problema. Spending for infrastructure. Um, you're correct um, on that note, Miss Anna. So dito, I guess, papasok yung importance ng private sector partnership. Would you agree? Yes, um, we encourage private sector partnership on, on the private sector. Yes, um, sabi nga po namin, build, 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 it's always um, a partnership with both the private and the public sector. Even uh, yung, I think, uh, yung public po, we encourage them to report the projects also to let us know because we won't have eyes in all the regions in the country. So if, uh, all. feeling namin, if this is to succeed, then we need the help of as much people as possible. So we've increased the transparency in the department also. We've now utilized drone monitoring. The reporting and monitoring of projects are not uh, top to bottom, meaning even if you're, a, uh, if you're a citizen with a social media or a camera, then you'd be able to report 24-7 the projects uh, to the department. And I think that's one of the most... Uh, beautiful reforms and yung public private partnership nga po natin also it has been um very good uh but yun nga uh, it's mostly in met in in metro manila in cebu in metro manila and in, in cebu um, okay. but most of the projects undertaken in visayas in mindanao are undertaken by government because syempre pagka ppp may profit component tayo doon Right, right. So, yeah, you've mentioned the private sector, no? Um, it's just right to call in one of our biggest private sector players, no? Um, we're lucky, as I mentioned kanina, uh, we're lucky to have Architect Tan from Ayala Land. So, we'd like to call Architect Tan now for um, uh, to share with us how Ayala Land as a private private a developer is able to participate in the government's um, build, build, build program. No, not only now under this administration, but in the past, um, uh, I used to cover the Department of Finance, and I would always um, write about the Ayala Group's participation before in big ticket projects. No, so may we may we hear from you, Architect Tan, on this golden age of infrastructure where. That's you know we're seeing upon us, and how is Ali able to participate in this? Well, uh, Yalaland has really been very supportive of uh, the government's infrastructure projects over many uh, residential terms because infrastructure is a very necessary component for real estate development. So uh, ever since the time of uh, President Phil Del Ramos, when PPP was first uh, developed, we have been involved in several projects already. And during President Ramos' mm -hmm. term, we, we were involved in a consortium that built the EDSA MRT3 project, as well as in the privatization of the MWSS, which is now Manila Water Company. And uh, after that, right. we, we've been involved in other projects, like during the term of uh, uh, President Ligno uh, Aquino, it was the Manila Cavite Expressway project, which is now complete. And now we're involved again in the BBB project as a partner of Metro Pacific, in the construction of the LRT1 South Extension Project, which is a 12 kilometer extension of uh, LRT1 from Baclaran to Niog in Bacoor, Cavite. So, direct involvement is uh, one of our you know, avenues for supporting the, the projects of the government. But even indirectly, we support uh, 
the, uh, the BBB project of the government by assisting government whenever we can. Uh, just recently for the Cavite Laguna Expressway, we worked very closely with the Department of Public Works and Highways for the, to allow them to purchase right of way along Laguna Boulevard in our Laguna Tecta Park uh, project to help complete the Laguna section of the Cavite Laguna Expressway. This is an eight kilometer section and we, we were very cooperative with DTWH to allow them to purchase the right of way and what they purchased from us, the funds, we actually used to complete the service roads beside that uh, highway also in uh, in Laguna. So in the end, uh, we helped the government at the same time, the, the revenue raised this, we helped to complete the, the, the public road in that area so that it becomes a fully functional highway with service roads. So we're always been very supportive of the government and we will be into the future. Like all these programs, every administration, um, six years long yon, then they have plans for they have they have their own respective infrastructure programs. No, as a developer, how does how does Ayala uh, re reconcile this? Like, how do you how does this come into play? Because you know you have your own long term plans, you land bank. Um, and then there's a new admin administration that will come in and they have their own plans. Is this a problem or how does this come into play? It's not really a problem. Uh, we always look for opportunities that come in with new uh, presidential terms, like uh, the Cellar mm -hmm. to South Extension Project and BBC with the MCS. Mm -hmm. But we also uh, look at uh, the long term. You know, these projects, you know, journey, they're yeah. not. Yeah, uh, we, take, we take a long-term view of this because it's rare that a lot of these projects, in big infrastructure projects, can be completed in only one presidential term. From the planning, right, to right, the financing, right, right. the design, the implementation. So we're prepared to, to go over that, uh, mm. that distance from, from one term to the other and see it through. Okay? So it's both a, both a short and a long-term thing. For the short term, we see what the okay. projects uh you know, would benefit uh, and add value to the developers now. But at the same time, we see the projects that we need to, you know, start today and carry on into the next presidential term. So we never, we, you know, we never stop uh, both uh, the planning and at the same time, uh, seeing what the opportunities are with the current projects. Correct, correct. You know, I notice uh, what's very distinct about um, your residential projects now, Avida projects, for example, you're always located in areas which are really good locations. They're very, they're just in short proximity to um, transportation. How do you call this? Uh, these are very transportation oriented developments. Um, that's for sure. You're, the locations of um, Ayala land project, especially you know, uh, like Avida, for example, I'm familiar with Avida because um, I see there they have a lot of projects in Quezon City, you know, and even in Makati. I, I mean, in Quezon City where I live, but even in Makati. My question is, how are you able to foresee that there will be like magkakaroon ng MRT station in that area? How are you able to foresee that in this development, you know, there will be um, a transportation-oriented development later on? Well, we work closely again with government. Uh, we try to keep abreast of what their plans are, see how it's developing, okay. and then we, we see what the opportunities are given our large land bank, which has the most opportunity right. to take advantage of this uh, new infrastructure. At the same time, we do very careful market studies. Like, for example, in the in the case of Abida, which is uh, primarily for the middle class, a lot of them are commuters. So based on their uh, right. market studies we, we do for them, we identify what are their transport needs. And rather than just uh, waiting for transport to come in, we often uh, take a direct hand in establishing uh, public transport terminals near, the near these developments or working with the public transport operators to bring in the routes that these residents uh, would, uh, would need. And just to give you an example, probably one of the best examples of this is the, the P2P, the point-to-point -point buses, 
which uh, were very successful uh, for our developers. We've established yes. this, uh, for Trigoma, for Alabang, for the body. And these are really uh, the kind of comfortable, reliable public transport that middle class commuters uh, uh, look for. And we, we actively uh, lobby and work with the operators just to make sure that this uh, transport routes are brought into our development rather than just waiting for things to happen. We make things happen. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that architect. Because you know, it's really, it's really impressive. Like when, when there's a major, if there's a, like an MRT or a bus station, one of the first, one of the most prominent developers you see there is an Ayala development. No? So it's very near. So it's, and then hearing you now, I realize that there's, there's a lot of planning that goes with it and market research. You can't just buy a property there and put up a condominium no marami pa lang trabahong kailangan gawin but i think that's one of the edge of ayala land and um all your other subsidiaries as a developer no so it's very impressive i guess that's in your area no as the transportation and urban planner oh yes yes i have to be involved in practically all our projects to make sure that they are accessible that people can get to them have uh, good uh, public transport available, uh, even ranging from parking yeah. to to even as far as uh, tricycles. We have to plan it up to that uh, level of detail to make sure that the development works and people, you know, are happy to live in these places. Yes, yes, I agree. I have friends also who, especially in Makati, and it's also it's not just near transport oriented transport. Um, oriented development so it's also near the commercial um, districts like it's well within walking distance to their offices but not necessarily within the financial district so it's not that expensive but it's within um, a, a bearable walking distance so yeah actually not even bearable like close close proximity talaga so um this takes a lot of planning as i mentioned no thank you very much architect we would like to hear now from um i guess how this this involves a lot of urban planning as, as you mentioned kanina no i'd like to call in another guest architect june palafox um june has been architect june has been around no so uh, maybe i guess um from the time that there is still a lot of um how do you say it barren uh yeah. land um architect this is very tricky urban planning no is um I, I even wonder why sometimes i wonder when i go to an area and there's a development i wonder if there's really an urban planning that was considered there because you know there's a development but traffic is so bad so how 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 does urban planning uh, come into play here? Um, you know, I, I guess some architects, parang they just they just have to do agree with what their client wants. A client wants to put up a development here, but how how does urban planning come into play? Do you um, you know do you do you change as an architect? Do you have the voice to change it? Um, l l let's hear from you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Ms. Iris. I have given up many projects already when it impacts negatively on the environment or traffic. Unfortunately, some of our colleagues take over projects that I give up. And, and thanks for uh, Ms. Anna and, uh, and, uh, and Architect Badi for their saving. I used to be head of planning architecture of Ayala Corporation. That was the first time Ayala went into Ayala Heights and Cebu, Cebu Business Park. And one thing we do is, I'm first, first of all, I'm an architect. And one project that I really work from, you said, Barren, from the desert of Dubai, what it is today. Even before working for Ayala, I was urban planner architect of Dubai already. And some of the projects we do, we try to take to Metro Manila and bring in the best practices in the world as much as practicable. And we're doing a lot of projects. We're more focused now in the Philippines after doing work in 40 other countries. And we see the high development potential of the Philippines. 
And thanks to public works and our spectacular cluster presentation of Ms. Anna, because public infrastructure is in a cuts up situation. Like the six year conference on roads in Manila was forward by the American Corps of Engineers in 1945. It's only now that circumferential road number six being done. The light rail transit, I was part of the World Bank funded Metro Plan Manila. Uh, light rail transit used to have completed eight lines by 1992. The Bataan, Cavite uh, bridge and tunnel, I had, we, we had proposed that in 1991. Now it's being done. So many of the and it's a cuts up situation right now. And I'm very glad that uh, they have increased the, the GDP. And all these elevated uh, expressways and the American Planning Association, we've been discussing that these elevated uh, skyways are good for 15 years. After 15 years, they may become elevated parking lots. So in parallel, we should be doing a public transit because most of our infrastructure is biased for the automobile. My anecdotal research says only 2% of Filipinos own cars. 100% of Filipinos are pedestrians. So there are 20 kinds of urban walking and biking as the first two modes, then the various modes of transportation. So if there's time, I'd like to present some of our projects that we want. Uh, Clark as a smart city, Clark as a green city, uh, Clark as Aerotropolis, airport driven city, within Pampanga, which are also planned as, uh, as good candidates, urban road centers outside Metro Manila, to the Canadian Metro Manila. So Clark Aerotropolis, Aerotropolis airport driven city, it's about 4,000 hectares. So we try to uh, put in place here best practices in the world. And again, lessons learned from the mistakes of our urban developments in our country. So Infrastructure, there's strong support from government, uh, different modes of transportation, very well connected uh, with Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon, even internationally, the 2,000 hectare airport. So we have uh, planned seven districts for uh, Clark and, and Aerotropolis, and all of them is multi-use, mixed-use, but they were themed into uh, uh, airport-centric airport, airport uh, uh, land uses, like logistics area, like industrial, leisure district, lifestyle district, and so on. But all of these are multi-use. So different kinds of transportation by railway, thanks to the OTR transport, thanks to public works for all these uh, roadways being connected to the rest of Luzon in Metro Manila, and also for the, the uh, most important international gateway, Clark International Airport. Clark International Airport is 2,000 hectares. Naiya Manila International Airport is only 600 hectares. Most international airports are at least 2,000 hectares. And I hope we'll be able to influence the architectural typology of all the buildings go on up here with green, green infrastructure and green architecture with, uh, with green rooftops, solar roof, and so on. And again, the different modes of transportation. The lungs of the cities, Metro Manila, we really lack open spaces and lungs of the city. And during this pandemic, it's really, we should emphasize now that uh, lungs of the cities, open spaces and parks improves our uh, immune system against uh, virus and so on. And here there's uh, physical connectivity, visual connectivity and outdoor dining. In some of the webinars that I spoke, restaurants now should be 30% kitchen, 20% indoor, 50% al fresco outside because the virus is uh, easier to spread within enclosed spaces. Even shopping malls have been introverted looking inward. They should not be extroverted looking outward. And the roads that we've been proposing elsewhere in the world uh, uh, and we're able to propose it here should be one third for pedestrians and bicycles, one third for trees and landscaping, it takes 10 trees to recover the oxygen out of the carbon monoxide per car. So again, walking as first mode of transport and lots of open spaces. Like in Metro Manila, as I said, we really lack the lungs of the city. Singapore has 45% open space because of the vertical city of Singapore. 
Hong Kong has 71% open space. In fact, many universities elsewhere in the world now, they take Manila as Metro Manila as a case study of how not to do it. And unfortunately, in, in the 70s, we had good plans for Metro Manila. Metro Manila was as good, if not better, than the plans for Kuala Lumpur, as good as Singapore and Hong Kong. And you can see in here, in, in Kral, the Central Park and Civic Center, Stutzenberg Central Park, the original name of Clark was Stutzenberg. So the parade ground will remain as like the Central Park of, of Clark. So hopefully this one will influence the urban planning and even the architecture and urban design of developments. By 2050, we need at least 100 new cities. If we don't plan for that, our cities will be as bad, if not worse, than Metro Manila today. Because between 2050, 2070, we'll probably have 40 to 50 million more Filipinos. So we need to plan new townships and new cities. And uh, leisure districts, uh, of course, uh, golf courses should be more uh, inclusive now. So the golf courses in Clark are open to everybody, not exclusive membership. Uh, they open it up. So a lot of leisure spaces. So we made Clark, uh, uh, I think we all like to live in environment-friendly, master-planned, designed buildings, cities, communities, integrating places to live, work, shop, dine, learn, and worship, better lighted, cross-generational, inclusive, integrating uh, places to live, work, shop, and dine with healthcare and wellness centers. And we're, we're able to do it for Clark, and there's a lot of foreign investors now. And fortunately, we also won the urban planning of Pampanga Megalopolis. Megalopolis composed of several metropolis and uh, metropolis several cities. So in Pampanga, we did a uh, aerotropolis for Clark and surroundings, agropolis, the farm and the city, aquapolis, Candaba swamps, the water in the city, ecolopolis, environment in the city. So there's a lot of opportunities now planning outside Metro Manila. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share. Thank you, architect uh, June. You know, um, what you said, medyo scary din, ah? like um, we, we're, we're gonna increase in, in a few years, the dami ulit yung Filipinos and we need more cities. But I guess COVID-19 has taught us how to do it right this time. Like, as you said, you've mentioned um, numerous times during your presentation, lungs of the city, the yes, lungs of the city. So I think that's very important. We need a lot of outdoor. Everybody now, if they want to go out, they they if if somebody invites me out, I I'll ask if there's an alfresco in the venue. And so that's very important. Now I think that's that's our biggest one of our biggest lessons from COVID nineteen as far as um, architecture is concerned, no? So, um, Architect June, you mentioned a lot, and I'm, I'm very happy with your opening a while ago that you also turned down a lot of projects, no? Because um, I've always thought that, you know, there's a lot of, we have so much development and there's not enough emphasis on effective and efficient urban planning do you think it's time that we have a department of urban planning because some countries have that yes ma'am like uh, i was named hard and invited to help plan dubai 1977 after i finished the metro plan manila and to work for government that time because mm. i was a follower of up i was required to work uh, two years for government mm. work and world bank funded project and undp mm. funded project so in Dubai, they used to have a department of engineering. Town planning was just a section. We're able to elevate town planning mm. equal to. And in Dubai, even road projects, it goes through the urban planning first, transportation planners, traffic engineering planners, mm. engineers. Mm. In our country, we have 1,600 LGUs. Not many of them mm. have, uh, planners as head of planning, and usually the planning is under the engineering department. And many of them are, if I may say, political appointees. And I've spoken to some yes, of them. Yes. Why did you approve this type of land use? You know what I was told? Mm -hmm. Architect June, 
that's a political decision. It's not an urban planning mm. decision. So urban planners mm. overwhelm, superseded by political decisions. So urban planning in the Philippines mm. is mostly by politicians, if I may say. But I could say also mm. we have 1,000 uh, mayors and 10% mm. of them very good. The, the 90%, they can be better. Okay. So how do we move forward on this, sir? Given the situation, given that um, there's a lot of things that get in the way, do you think uh, Congress should you know, pass a law in this regard? Or is it simply moral situation on, on the part of um, our private developers? Yes, and even I government. Agree. All of the above. We have so many stupid, no, not stupid, obsolete laws. <laughs> we have so many obsolete laws. In fact, I told some uh -huh. friends of my legislature that we have so many stupid laws and they rewarded me. Architect, please don't call them stupid. Okay, I call them Jurassic laws. Even our building code, eh? you can even build right, right. Uh, maybe even 100 stories. Building hmm. I for sidewalk only one meter in Singapore. Some of yes. them were 100% open space. So, the building footprint hmm. of the tall they put it on a rooftop garden 100% open space. Right. And even hmm. our, our HLU RB regulations 30% requirement includes the roads, so net effects only 8% open space. And okay, okay. So, so, so many things we have to review, and and of course, developers are they have to have some profit margin. And one of my professors in Harvard Graduate School of Design was told us mm. uh, architecture and sustainability course, master planning sustainability. One of the problems of cities is the highest and best use study by business planners. They don't consider the environment. They don't consider the traffic, the impact on the utilities. The traffic. And here right. comes LGUs approving change in land use. Like uh, our right. CB, right. I'm not blaming the private developers, but LGU said mm. approve them. Like after 1990, right. Right. many of our central business districts, because of the land value appreciation, they increased the floor area right. rate to four times. So the traffic generation times, is, yeah. but government infrastructure could not catch up. And our urban planning okay. also, impressive cities now. I'm a fellow of the Council for Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat headquartered in Chicago. We're encouraging more compact mm -hmm. cities or vertical cities so we can preserve mm -hmm. the forest because urban sprawl, low-rise developments, eating up into the farms, into the forest. And your question mm -hmm. about... You know, the Philippines is 400 times the size of Singapore. Singapore properly yes. Yes, yes. spaces is 5 million population. So if the Philippines is 400 times uh, in size than Singapore, if we plan properly the Philippines, we can accommodate 2 billion population. But we have to go vertical cities. We have more open spaces. It's really planning. In, in, if I may say... It's really planning, way. yeah. The rulers of Dubai that I work with, they have visionary mm -hmm. leaders with vision, strong political right, will, right. good appreciation of good urban planning, good appreciation of design, right. like engineering, and good governance. And they have targets. Like, uh, they have targets, make, yeah. Make Dubai join the first world, first world city in 15 years from a desert town. They were able to achieve from that. a desert town, yeah. A desert town in 15 years, uh, they became a global city, yeah. And they borrowed yeah. money, they don't have right. enough oil, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Um, architect junior, correct. Um, we need to do a lot of there's there's a whole, um, you know, long line of things to do. So, um, at this Can point, I'd like to call in, Can I uh, one sure, one? sure, yes. Yeah. You know, in 1976, Metroplan Manila, we have, I was team leader 
and 20 experts from mm. uh, all the ones who planned Singapore and London. We said that time, mm. the do nothing scenario, that's 1976, mm. Catastrophic, mm. Drought, catastrophic flooding, not prepared for disasters, uh, lack of decent housing, water supply crisis, garbage crisis, sewerage crisis. We said that when I was 26 years old. I'm already 71 years old. So we're still in the analysis paralysis stage. And we said that time, it's not enough to have blueprints, blueprints, blueprints. We need a planning system, not just blueprints, blueprints, blueprints. <laughs> Not just blueprints. Very well said, Architect June. I'd like to call in the rest of the panel at this point. So let's hear from the government side and the private sector. No, So um, Ms. Anna and Architect Tano, I'd like to hear from you because um, uh, as Architect June said, no, there's a lot of planning that's really needed. How do we balance this? From the government side, how can infrastructure catch up? And from the private sector side, Architect Tan, what comes into play? Do you just, um, you know, Architect June mentioned, it's not enough to just, you know, develop and develop. There's a lot of urban planning that's needed. Um, any, of, any of you can go ahead first. So how does... Um, all of this come into play with the importance of, you know, Ayala Land as a developer, there's, there's shepherd, you need to make profits. Um, the government also needs to keep on doing its infrastructure. But with the importance of urban planning, how do we do all this? How do we strike a balance? Um, I agree with architect. Uh, Miss Anna first, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I agree with architect Pal Palafox, yes, you know, build, build, build team, Secretary Villar, Secretary Art, Secretary Vince, mm -hmm. we're all uh, believers of design and master plans. If you look at the EDSA decongestion, uh, we did a master plan first before uh, doing anything. Uh, the Luzon Spine Expressway, we really did the master plan first and uh, look at the numbers uh, before undertaking which projects to uh, prioritize and uh, how much will this uh, benefit uh, the Filipino public. Um, and I agree, um, there is a need for pedestrian infrastructure. We have been mm. pushing for pedestrian uh, infrastructure ourselves. In fact, uh, DPWH has issued several department orders related to such. Uh, Secretary Villar mm -hmm. has now mandated all our operational units to include uh, bicycle and pedestrian uh, facilities uh, in all new projects. So we cannot do much on existing projects, but on new projects, then they have to include a pedestrian uh, component and a bicycle component from the onset mm -hmm. of the project. Um, and this becomes the basis uh, for funding of these projects uh, also. Um, we have uh, been starting uh, on pedestrian infrastructure. One of them is Laguna Lake infrastructure, uh, but we've been uh, pushing mm -hmm. for more, like the three bridges across mm -hmm. uh, Pasig River, Marikina, uh, Marikina River, and Mangan Floodway, the Binondo Intramuros mm -hmm. Bridge, the Pantaleon Australia Bridge, and the Binondo Intramuros, they will all have pedestrian uh, components. Um, the Tagaytay Bypass has a pedestrian component. The Cagayan de Oro Coastal Road, the, the, the Tacloban or the Late Tide Embankment Project has pedestrian uh, components. Um, we, we are big believers of uh, pedestrian, but uh, we also have to ensure that there is a solution to the traffic congestion in Metro Manila that is causing our GDP 3.5 billion a day. And this is something that uh, we knew we had to, to to solve and address as uh, as government. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Buddy Tan would agree that now it serves a purpose because we're now pushing for self-sovereignty. You can choose the lifestyle you want um, wherever you are. So if you want to work in Quezon City, you are now not forced to work mm. and live in Quezon City. You can opt to actually stay mm. in Putilupa or Laguna so long as you're willing mm. to do a 30-minute travel time, which was impossible before. 
but now you, you are able to decide what kind of life you want to live in and we're not forcing you to drive a car in fact we're, if you want to take a bicycle then we hope there will come a time that uh, people who want to ride a bicycle will be able to do so more harmoniously. And if you want to ride public transportation, mm. then you can ride the Metro Manila subway. Uh, the boring machine has now arrived. I mean, uh, the only reason why I was discussing expressways because DPWH is in charge of expressway, but we are in conjunction mm. and uh, in coordination with Department of Transportation under the leadership of Secretary Arcade. And, uh, we can assure you that 2021 is a big year for Build to build, build. There will be a lot of train projects. The Metro Manila subway will start construction. Uh, projects which mm -hmm. we've never heard before, like mega bridges, will come into fruition. I mean, maybe not completed within the term of the president, like because it's 10 times, 15 times longer than the longest bridge ever constructed. But uh, at least you can get a, a glimpse of what you can expect uh, mm -hmm. for the future. Mm. Thank you, Miss Anna. Exciting. No, we all know naman that build, build, build projects. These are like marathon, you know, from one administration to another. But it's important to lay the foundation now, as did other administrations did um, prior to the Duterte administration. No, um, thanks for that. I'd like to ask Mr. Baditan, um, going back to the whole theme of this webinar, no, and with urban planning in mind uh we talked about this already a while ago on your projects no um but as a developer what is the general um the general values of your group in developing um architect june mentioned kanina some developers just build and build without urban planning in mind no would you like to share how ayala does it well, in reality, it's really, we're not really primarily driven by profits. It's creating value for your investment. You know, buying land and building a house is a major uh, life changing event for many people. Life changing. So, Correct. Yes, yes. It's a major commitment. So, we ensure at Ayala Land that when you make your decision and choose to build in Ayala community, in an Ayala state, that you get the best value for your investment in terms of facilities, the utilities. The infrastructure, I mean, second to none. That's why, you know, as you probably know, Ayala land, uh, estates, land uh, investments, communities, and I've always appreciated the value because we have carefully maintained that that, uh, that the value, the maintenance, the planning is always top notch. Mm. So, uh, in a way, that's mm. the kind of thing we all want to uh, bring into the government when we get involved in infrastructure projects. Again, we, we don't take shortcuts. We put the best effort in doing what we can, whatever the private sector mm. is asked to get involved in, in, mm. in private. Okay? So it's the same thing. It's not about uh, getting the most private, but giving the best value for the investment that people are going to give to our projects. Thank you. Thank you, Architect Tano. We're, we're down to our last few minutes, but I guess uh, before I call each of you for like your La final message. No? Uh, I just wanted to, I don't know if you'll agree with me, my takeaways from this uh, webinar, the golden age of infrastructure. Um, it's not a blueprint. Thank you, Miss Anna, for your updates. I'm really excited. Aabangan ko yon um, for all the completion. No? And then second, uh, urban planning is really important. I think it's really, um, it shouldn't be a second or third priority. It should be a primary uh, priority in planning, both from the government side and from the private sector. No, and third, I guess um, you the the COVID nineteen has really changed the way our architecture or cities should look like. So we really um, should take this in, into consideration. And finally, from the um, from Ayala Land and Avida. Um, we're very happy to know that you don't take shortcuts. It's really um, value for money and the values that um, we as consumers are able to get, you know, from that life-changing decision in buying a house or a property. Um, on that note, um, this, this ends our uh, discussion, but I'd like to 
give you the floor just for your final uh, parting messages. Miss Anna, I'll start with you. Uh, President uh, Duterte and Secretary Villar is working uh, doubly hard to ensure that uh, they will deliver uh, the Philippines' golden age of infrastructure. I mean, in the next few months, there will be a lot of openings and completions and that I think uh, this will happen nationwide. Uh, Central Luzon Link Expressway will open and Let's S Let's Connector will open. We'll be opening about 10 more ramps of Skyway Stage 3. Um, tuloy-tuloy po yung magiging uh, pagbubukas po ng ating major projects. Um, in fact, kanina po, nandun kami sa Laguna Quezon Connector and we're also expected to open that uh, by March of this year. So, uh, makakaasa po kayo that the development is not just happening in Metro Manila, but there is development mm -hmm. in every province in the country and that uh, in the next few months, uh, finally, magagamit na po natin itong mga uh, projects na ginawa po natin lahat in the last um, few years. Uh, we'd like to thank all the 6.5 million uh, construction workers who helped us build uh, the infrastructure uh, that we'd be able to enjoy in the next few months. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Anna. May pahabo lang na question from the audience, no? Um, where are the top five locations um, where there would be major infrastructure works in the, let's say, next five years? Just, oh, next just top five locations, yeah. Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, but let me see. Uh, siguro if uh, Metro Manila as a whole will be uh, drastically improved, um, we are confident mm -hmm. that by 2022, almost every city in Metro Manila will just be 20 to 30 minutes away. Uh, one of the biggest mm -hmm. projects that we're undertaking is Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge. It's a 32 kilometer. Wow. Uh, in context, the longest bridge in the Philippines is only two kilometers. And uh, Bataan Cavite is 15 times longer. We have another one. We have the Panay Gimaras Negros Bridge. Uh, this will connect uh, Panay Gimaras Negros via land travel, so you don't have to take the boat. Um, and these are the projects that uh, I think uh, will make a very big difference. Sa Mindanao po, nandiyan po yung uh, Davao uh, Coastal Road, uh, Davao City Bypass. Um, mm. We have Davao Samal Bridge. Um, Cagayan mm. de Oro, Cagayan de Oro Coastal Road. There's gonna be a lot of improvement everywhere. We, and mahirap to choose five because there's a lot and we made sure there's a big ticket project in almost every region. Very well, sir. I understand. Thank you, Miss Anna. I don't know ngayon kung saan ako lilipat. Sa Panay, sa Gimaras. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to all these projects. Uh, for Architect June, um, just a parting shot. And if you have a forecast on the next booming location. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just very quick this, uh, parting message. During this pandemic, it's still an opportunity to, to rethink and, and, and this pandemic is reshaping our cities, buildings, and spaces. And the lands of the city has been uh, uh, championed by Hippocrates 400 BC. It's good for public health. Then the oh. nurse Nightingale, 1800s. Then the planner of Central Park, New York. And they all believe that open spaces, lands of city are very important to our health as, and, and so on. And then where to invest, it's all over the Philippines. And Davao is not just politically correct, it's economically correct because it's 8% GDP <laughs> growth. And we just said that I'm a director for urban development infrastructure at the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And uh, Vice President for Mindanao sort of complained that the budget for Mindanao is lower than last year. It's not proportionate to the contribution to our our economy and i'm just saying we just had a meeting before this ci so this is now the time one way sorry to quote him again one of our professors in harvard told us this century will be a rest century uh rethink replan engineer we develop renew poly urban renaissance and this century is asia pacific century and our country is strategically located in the middle 
Thank you very much for the opportunity to share. Thank you. Thank you, Architect June. Yan ang takeaway ko from your talk. Re. So let's review, rewind, uh, recharge, yeah. redevelop. Uh, Architect yes. Tan, uh, um, may we hear from you your final parting message? Um, thank you for sharing. No? And if you have a forecast on the next booming location as an architect. Well, historically, uh, Metro Manila has always expanded uh, beyond its uh, perimeter. And uh, like mm -hmm. before, it was driven more by population growth. Now, with all the infrastructure programs of government, it will also be driven by infrastructure. So just like uh, Anami had mentioned, people will have more choices on where to live. For example, if the North-South Commuter Rail Project, people can live as far and, uh, with as far as Papaga, I still be able to make it in reasonable time to back Manila to work. And the same thing with all the new highways. I think what's different in this administration versus other administrations that, unlike before, where infrastructure was uh, Manila centric, now it's more regional uh, mm. uh, eccentric already. We're expanding to areas outside of Black Manila to other regions like in the Visayas and Mindanao. So there are more opportunities for people to live elsewhere, and very soon, uh, business centers, uh, major business centers, should also develop in those areas. So uh, development is becoming more widespread in the Philippines, and uh, over time, mm. people have more choices to live, uh, where to live, work and play. So infrastructure really is a major uh, driver of, of economies as well as uh, open planning trends. And, more so now, I think it will even be accelerated uh, further with all these uh, projects of the government. Yes, yes. Thank you, Architect Tan. Very well said as well. I guess um, uh, I still we add, all can, agree that. We can, go, go, can ahead. Add, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Since <laughs> we're, I've, written, I've written about uh, 19, 2017, the Golden Age of Philippine Infrastructure. 2017 to 2021. And also, there are seven kinds of infrastructure. We're focused now on the gray infrastructure, the build, build, build. We also have the green infrastructure, the plant, plant, plant. Mm. And, and instead of building just dikes, maybe plant, plant, plant the, the new the mountains. And the first kind of infrastructure, I call them progressive infrastructure. These are the international mm. airports, international seaports, international schools, hospitals, hotels, what have you, progressive. Second one is the hard infrastructure. We all know that, roads mm -hmm. and utilities. Third mm -hmm. is the soft infrastructure, the ease of doing business, no red tape, no corruption. Mm -hmm. And then fourth, mm -hmm. again, the green infrastructure. Then we have the artificial intelligence infrastructure. So digital infrastructure, if you have digital infrastructure, you can work from below coast to Tawi Tawi with that digital infrastructure. Correct. And as Barrio Dan was saying, uh, outside Metro Manila now is uh, uh, from we have projects from Metro Ilocos, Digan, Pampanga, La Union, or the whole Philippines right mm. now in Metro Manila. Mm. And thanks also to the infrastructure team, uh, Director Anna, for sharing it with us. As I said, even the Gimaras. Negros, I propose that when we're doing Gimaras Island Master Plan and Ilo Ilo, again, with the Bataan. So I'm so happy. Uh, and in my articles, we hope the next administration will continue this initiative. Like the subway was first proposed by the Japanese, 1970. And it's, I mentioned the other project a while ago. So we, it's really uh, public infrastructure is a cuts up situation. In all cities in the world, especially the progressive ones, it pres the built environment is 20% government, only 20% government. 80% is government, uh, private sector. Private sector and then 80, 20. So we yeah. should not just rely yeah. on government. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. You're correct. Thank, thank you, Architect June. I guess the overall message um from this webinar is we all have a role to play government or private sector because we only have one country as well and we all need to work do our best give our best to make a better create a better future for 
the Philippines. Thank you, everyone. It's been a fruitful discussion. I learned a lot. I will remember this uh, webinar the next time I see the next infra project or the next highway. I pass the next highway. And um, thank you, Architect Tan, Miss Anna, Architect June. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Phil Star. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes. Thank you, everyone. Property Report uh, would like to end this webinar here. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, Avida as well. And see you in our next webinar. Thank you so much. From a life on your own to a family of your own. From walking her to school to walking her down the aisle. From the saddest ending to happier beginnings. Avida.